Muslim nations urged to move in tandem with advancement of technologies. Prioritizing renewal-oriented education among universities in Muslim countries important. Muslim countries must move in tandem with advancement of technologies, including fintech. Now, this is crucial to increase their collective wealth so that Muslim countries can spread the prosperity for the benefit of all. Citing an example, Minister of Economic Affairs Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali said Malaysia's Shared Prosperity Vision 2020 is a holistic approach towards achieving a higher value economy while reducing the gap between income classes, communities, territories and supply chains to ensure equitable income. He said this at a plenary session on redistribution of wealth shared prosperity in conjunction with Kuala Lumpur Summit 2019. When met after the session, he said Muslim countries have the potential to be global economic powers if they are able to fully exploit their rich resources. Uh, sementara kita tidak menafikan produk-produk negara bukan Islam tetapi ada baiknya kita memulakan perdagangan dan trade dengan negara-negara Islam uh, supaya mereka juga dapat meningkatkan uh, uh, keperluan uh, sebab kita kena correct the imbalances between supply and demand uh, among the Muslim countries. Um, permintaannya mungkin uh, banyak, tinggi, tetapi keupayaan kita untuk menghasilkan produk-produk ini kepada mereka. Dan uh, apabila kita trade among the Muslim countries, uh, kita juga dapat uh, memastikan tidak ada pengeluaran uh, local currencies daripada negara-negara yang -negara. berkenaan. There is a need for universities in the predominantly Muslim countries to strengthen their research collaborations. Education Minister Dr. Masli Malik said efforts must be concentrated to enhance translational research, focusing on the transfer of technology and knowledge between the university, the community and the industry in order to improve the quality of life of the people. Dr. Masli said in many developed economies, industry players jointly work with research universities to undertake cutting-edge research that has the potential to spur translational research outcome, adding that he had raised the matter during a session at the Kuala Lumpur Summit 2019. Kita juga telah menyeru supaya lebih banyak lagi apa ni, kolaborasi di antara universiti-universiti di negara-negara majoriti umat Islam aa, dengan negara Malaysia. Begitu juga saya menekankan kepentingan untuk kolaborasi dengan pihak industri dan juga pelbagai pihak aa, pembuat polisi. Kita ingin memastikan bahawa universiti kita menghasilkan kajian-kajian akan memberikan impak kepada negara, kepada global dan juga kepada pembangunan masyarakat. During the session, the Education Minister also introduced the idea of renewal-oriented education with four main pillars which emphasised on new approach on seeking knowledge including ethics, methods of teaching under the fourth industrial revolution, research collaborations and renewing the infrastructure of institution. Uzbekistan is keen to draw more visitors from Malaysia and further develop ties in other areas with this country. Rustam Kasimov, the country's state advisor to the president, noted that Uzbekistan is undergoing a lot of reforms under the leadership of President Shafkat Mirziyoyev. <laughs> Biz yana bir marotiba O'zbekiston bilan Malayziyani o'rtasidagi munosabatlarni yana bir rivojlantirish kerak ekanligi to'g'risida gaplashdik. Ayniqsa O'zbekistonda oxirgi 3 yilda O'zbekiston Respublikasi prezidenti Mirziyoyev janob Olilar tomonidan olib borilayotgan islohotlarda juda katta imkoniyatlar yaratilyapti. U bo'lsin siyosiy sohada, ichki siyosat sohasida, iqtisodiyot sohasida va biz 
He said this after calling on Prime Minister Tundakta Made Mohamad on the sidelines of the Kuala Lumpur Summit 2019. On tourism, he said that tourist arrivals from Malaysia to Uzbekistan stands at some 4,000 annually, a small figure compared to Malaysia's 33 million population. Now, Malaysia welcomes the support from other Muslim countries on the trilateral cooperation between Malaysia, Pakistan and Turkey to set up a television channel to tackle Islamophobia. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad says such support will contribute greatly in the effort of eliminating negative perception towards Islam. Uh, propaganda yang anti Muslim termasuk Islamophobia dan adalah penting kita jelaskan apa yang berlaku apa sebenarnya agama Islam sama ada agama Islam itu adalah agama teroris ataupun tidak inilah kerjasama yang kita harap, harap kita boleh buat dan kita juga harap negara-negara lain juga akan bersama dengan kita dalam kempen worldwide to erase this uh, Perception katanya orang Islam ni adalah teroris. Tun Dr. Madir said this when visiting the RTM Media Operations Center for Kuala Lumpur Summit 2019 in KLCC. Meanwhile, he expressed his satisfaction over local and international media coverage for the summit. Well, the communication center is amazing. Uh, I'm told that 800 uh, journalists are here. That is one of the biggest gathering I know of uh, foreign and local journalists to cover a special event. And I am very satisfied with the coverage that they have given, uh, including uh, Malaysian uh, media also, give good coverage. And I am sure that the proceedings of the summit is uh, uh, available to everyone who wants to follow the meeting. On another note, then Dr. Mahathir said the U.S. Senate impeachment trial against President Donald Trump for abuse of power is because he violated the Constitution. He also said that Trump's action has weakened the world's superpower, resulting the president being accused as traitor by his own supporters. Parti dan Trump ini mereka secara buta tuli uh, mengikut uh, pemimpin mereka tetapi ternampak jelas bahawa uh, demokrat yang sudah tentu mewakili sebahagian yang besar daripada rakyat uh, uh, Amerika Syarikat uh, berpendapat bahawa dia telah melanggar undang-undang dan uh, atau cara negara dan dia mendedahkan uh, Amerika kepada macam-macam tuduhan dan melemahkan Amerika. Trump became the third U.S. president to face trial by the Senate after Andrew Johnson in 1868 and Bill Clinton in 1998 for abusing power. Earlier, Tun Dr. Mahathir received a courtesy visit from Russian delegates led by Kribrum JSC President Igor S. Ashmanor and Director of Economic Affairs and Government Relations Pavel V. Ponomarev. The 30-minute meeting touched on various initiatives to enhance the bilateral relations between both countries. Now, a couple was charged at the Ipoh Sessions Court today with exploiting and abusing their Indonesian maid eight years ago. J. Jaya Malas, 36, and V. Chandru, 35, pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to them separately before Judge Azman Abu Hassan. Jaya Mala, a mother of two, was charged with two counts of exploiting and abusing the maid to the extent of causing severe bodily injuries. She was charged under Section 13 of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act 2007, which carries a maximum imprisonment for three years and is liable to fine, and Section 325 of the Penal Code for voluntarily causing hurt, which carries a maximum seven years imprisonment, which is also liable to a fine upon conviction. 
Meanwhile, Chandru, who runs a tent rental business, was charged with exploiting his maid under Section 12 of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act 2007 and faces a maximum imprisonment for 15 years and is liable to fine if found guilty. The offences were committed at their home at number 25 Hala Kledang Emas 11A, Taman Kledang Emas in Ipoh between 2011 and 20th of October this year. Earlier, Deputy Public Prosecutor Fadi Abu Wahab, who prosecuted, proposed a 30,000 ringgit bail for each of them as the cases were deemed to be serious. However, lawyer Matthew Juice requested bail at 10,000 ringgit each as both of them needed to look after their two children, aged 11 and 13, as well as their sick mother. The court allowed bail of 10,000 ringgit with one surety each and set 20th of January for mention. And coming up after the break, B20 biodiesel program launched to help increase palm oil price. Welcome back. Inda Water Consortium Syndrome Berhad, IWK, owned by Ministry of Finance Incorporated and Trungano State-owned Sharikat IA Trungano Syndrome Berhad, or SATU, today inked an agreement for a joint billing system involving water supply and sewage treatment in the East Coast state. The joint billing system, which comes into effect on 1st of January, involves 20,661 customer accounts for premises or 7% of accounts with connected sewage services. An agreement on the joint billing system was signed by IWK and Satu in Kuala Lumpur. The signing of the agreement was witnessed by Water, Land and Natural Resources Minister Datuk Dr. Xavier Jayakuma and Trungano Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Samsuri Mokhtar. Datuk Dr. Xavier said Trungano was the first state to support the integrated billing initiative. Mulai dari tahun depan, uh, pelanggan semua akan dapat satu bil saja. Di dalam bil itu, uh, kita akan ada bil air sama-sama dengan bil uh, pembentukan. Uh, ini satu-satu yang baik sebab uh, di dalam sistem ini, collection kita, kutipan kita uh, akan meningkat dengan meningkat tekan kutipan tu. Uh, perkhidmatan kita pun akan saya uh, harap dan juga saya boleh janji lah bahawa uh, kita akan uh, meningkatkan uh, perkhidmatan kepada pelanggan. Dr. Dr. Xavier is also hopeful that more states will follow suit on the joint billing exercise. He said the Labuan Water Supply Department and IWK in Labuan had carried out the first joint billing exercise in March 2016 and the bill collection for IWK up to September this year had reached 91.6%. Now, palm oil price is expected to reach 3,000 ringgit per tonne metric next year. Primary Industries Minister Theresa Cox said this is based on the efforts of the ministry to explore new markets in Central Asia and Africa. Theresa said the implementation of the B20 biodiesel program, which begins next year, will help increase the use of the commodity in Malaysia. One ringgit levy per tonne metric palm oil production on palm oil plantation entrepreneurs starting next year will put aside negative accusation from Europe on the palm oil industry as well as boost positive growth of the palm oil price. Based on the trend, you can see that the trend is uh, moving upwards. Now it's already 2,800 plus plus. So we, now we foresee that by the end of the year, and there are already deals uh, that signed at 2,900 plus. So, so we are hopeful that it will reach uh, 3,000 a year. It's not because of permintaan, uh, the demand is... Finished. Yeah, it is. It is. That. And of course, uh, the, uh, in the whole industry, everyone is busy, everyone is happy, all the traders are happy. Uh, and uh, everyone is like uh, seeing that it's hopeful that it will go up, the price will go up. Theresa said this at the Ministry's monthly assembly in Putrajaya. The Ministry is also looking to achieve its target of getting the Malaysia Sustainable Palm Oil Certificate for 70% out of the 5.85 million hectares national palm oil plantation by next February. As of 19th of December, 62.14% or 3.63 million hectares of palm oil plantation have acquired the certificate. 
Sinai Airport Terminal Services Syndrome Berhad, or set as SB, is upgrading the Sinai International Airport, LTAS in Johor, to increase the space capacity to sustain the high number of passengers using the airport. Now, the 20 million ringgit worth project will upgrade the space in the arrival and departure hall at the south section of the terminal building. Sets SSB Chief Executive Officer Mohamed Derek Bashir said the project is expected to be completed in the second quarter of 2021. The early, the early months has really started. Uh, in fact, the site office is already up. Uh, we have already submitted all relevant uh, requests for approval from the local authorities. Uh, I think we should be starting uh, actual construction. Mama Derek said this at the Sinai International Airport 4 millionth passenger welcoming ceremony in Kulai, Johor. He said the project will increase the capacity of the terminal building to 5 million passengers per year compared to the current capacity of 4 million passengers per year. The upgrading works will see the construction of four new departure gates, waiting lounges and walkways that connects to the plane parking area. In sport, Russia to contest doping ban. Stay with us. National gymnast queen Farah Ann Abdulhadi and Wushu exponent Lo Chun Hao, who backed the country's first goal at the Sea Games for gymnastics and Wushu respectively, was awarded the Best Olympic Council Malaysia or OCM's Women's and Men's Olympian of the Year Awards 26th OCM Annual Dinner and Awards Night in Kuala Lumpur. Each of them received a special gold medal and 10,000 ringgit, which was presented to them by the Yandi Petuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riyatuddin Al Mustafa Bilal Shah. Farah said that the award was indeed the biggest recognition she has ever received after being in the field for the past 22 years. Meanwhile, Lo Chun Hao, who did not expect to be crowned with the medal, said the award gives him a special recognition. He also expressed his gratefulness to President of Wushu Malaysia Association, Datuk Chong Kim Fat, for guiding him to success. In the just concluded Sea Games, Farah won three gold medals in the all round event, uneven bars and floor exercise, while Chun Hao won gold for the Tai Chi Chuan and the Tai Chi Jian Wushu categories, respectively. And that's it from us. In our top story, Muslim nations urge to move in tandem with advancement of technologies. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.